All right, welcome everyone. Happy Sabbath again, once again. I'd like to thank the Lord for the privilege uh, He's given me to share His Word. And um, I thank the church for allowing me to be here. It's nice to be home again after being gone for about four weeks. And um, it's always nice to come home and be with our, our family members our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I am going to kneel. You can kneel with me if you want. We can pray that the Lord will bless this meeting and give us the understanding of this truth that he has in store for us this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne of grace to thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to worship in this free country. Father, we come on bended knees asking, Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit that we might understand what we're going to study today because we know that we're not living in normal times. Give us a clarity of mind and a revelation of your will for us. Speak to us, Lord. And I hide myself again uh, behind the cross this morning that they don't They won't hear me, but they want to hear from you, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to welcome each of you that are streaming live on the internet, uh, all the way to Honolulu. Aloha. Um, It is a privilege to have the technology that we have that we can speak the word of God in one country and hear it on the other side of the globe. So I'd like to thank uh, the Lord for the technology that he's given us today. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16, verse 13 and 14. And if you're there, say Amen. Amen? Let's, Revelation chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. Our title this morning is the threefold union of religion. The threefold union of religion. Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Verse 14. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the sum of the world. Is that what the Bible says? The whole world. To what? To gather them to the battle of that great day of God. So these unclean spirits are like frogs. What do frogs represent in the Bible? Lying tongues. We know that the Egyptians worshipped the frog. They used them as their idolatry. But in this context this morning on the threefold union of religion, we're going to look at it as the frogs, when they captivate or when they catch their uh, their prey, they use their tongues by deceit. Yes? But not only from the frog, but it says the dragon, the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of of the false prophet. prophet. We're going to look at this morning on this chapter in context of this threefold union and how you and I are seeing it clearly. Do you see it clearly? Well, we're going to see it clearly this morning in this context today. Well, we know that the dragon is wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnants of her seed. So who is this dragon according to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9? It's Satan himself, yes. We know that the dragon is Satan. 
And who is this beast? Who is this beast? That out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the prophet. We're going to look at the beast. We know that the beast. Let's go turn our Bibles to Revelation chapter 13. We're there in Revelation now. Let's go to Revelation 13. Verse 2. Are you there? Amen? Amen. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. So we know according to Daniel chapter 7, verse 23, beast represents what? A kingdom, a nation. And here in verse 2, uh, this beast power, huh, as it says, it's like a leopard, and his feet as a bear, and as the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So according to Revelation 13, this beast power of Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, is none other than the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church. Let's continue. I'm setting the groundwork for this threefold union of religion. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. So who is this false prophet? Huh? Let's go. Revelation 13. You're there already. It's here. We're living in this time. And I believe we need to fully understand what we're dealing with today. Because we are living in perilous times, my friend. Look at verse 11, and it says, I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he what? He exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So the second beast power is none other than the United States of America. But the problem here is that this other beast has made an image to the first beast. And what day does the first beast uh, worship? Sunday. And what are they teaching in their doctrines today? The evangelical churches today of America, or of all the world. What are they teaching? What does these doctrines consist of? Sunday worship? Spiritualism? The dead is not really dead. The false prophet is these evangelical churches that are preaching the false doctrines. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great God Almighty. So the devil himself is giving power to, to this threefold union. What does the word union mean? It's to combine in unity. One in doctrine. One in everything they do. Yes? I'm reading from Maranatha 2.10. 2, if you have your app, you can look at it with me. So the spirits, according to Maranatha, page 2.10, the spirits of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to fasten them in deception. Is the whole world being deceived today? Well, look at verse 14 in Revelation 13. Verse 14. You're there in Revelation already. And, and it reads, And deceiveth them by that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So this power is going to deceive 
the whole world. Ellen White tells us in page 166 of Maranatha, she says, except those who are kept by the power of God through faith in his word, the whole world will be swept into the ranks of this delusion. So what is this delusion the Bible is talking about this morning? I'd like to read another statement. This is found in Early Writings, page, and you, you students of the of, of inspiration knows where I'm going to go with this but uh, this is found in um, early writings let me pull it up page 88 and 89 this is Ellen White look, looking at a vision that she's had and it says, she says, I saw the rapidity with which this, this delusion was spreading. A train of cars was shown me going with the speed of lightning. The angel bade me look carefully. I fixed my eyes upon the train. It seemed, she says, it seemed that the whole world was on board that there could not be one left, said the angel. They are binding in bundles, ready to burn. Then he showed me the conductor who appeared like a stately fair person whom all the passengers looked up and reverenced. I was perplexed and asked my attending angel who it was. He said, it is Satan. He is the conductor in the form of an angel of light. He has taken the world captive. And when she says the world, the church is not excluded. I mean, she could say the worldlings were made captive. But she didn't say in that context. She says the whole world. Are we in the world? And you wonder, what is happening? They are given to strong delusions. To believe a lie. That they may be damned. We're living in a time where deception is rampant. I'm going to read another statement. In Maranatha, page 190. By the decree enforcing the institution of the papacy in violation of the law of God, our nation, our nation, the United States of America, will disconnect herself fully from righteousness. You Bible students, you know, you've read this. Uh, we're going to see it in a different light this morning. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because we're going to apply it to this de delusion, this deception that is hitting all of us, every one of us. We're encountering it. It is my prayer this morning that we can see behind this delusion that the devil has implanted even in God's church. When under the influence of this threefold union, the what? The, uh, we read it in Revelation, six, uh, Revelation 16 that uh, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government and, listen, and shall make provisions for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions. I have to submit to you this morning. And I want to say it very nicely. Are we deluded? Are we, have we bought into this delusion? Well, I looked up that word, propagating, propagation of papal falsehood. It means to, to extend on anything 
to extend, to impel, and to continue forward. So this propagation is not going to stop. You know, I, I hear many Adventists today thinking that it will get better. It will get better. Things are changing. They're opening up our states. We can go back to restaurants. We, we can, we can uh, take off our mask. My friends, under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in trampling the rights of our conscience. We're seeing that right now. God help us. God help us. So these unclean spirits, they're devils going about and it's destroying many. Destroying many. Amen? Yes, it is. She continues, she says, by these agencies, rulers and subjects will be alike deceived. Rulers and subjects are going to be deceived? Yes, rulers. Subjects. Are we one of them that are being deceived this morning? We're living in a time where uh, the Bible tells us that there are going to be supernatural manifestations. Huh? And they think it's coming from God. But it can also come from the devil. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15. Turn with me there. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Are you there? Verse, let's read verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of uh, righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. He will utilize spiritual, supernatural miracles so effectively that almost the entire world will be deceived and follow him. We've read it in Revelation 13 to 14 that he will deceive the world. And so these frogs in Revelation 16 verse 13 to 14, these frogs are, are, are being, they're using deception through lies after lies after lies. You can't count them. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, you're, you're hearing propagation, propaganda on the media and deceiveth the whole world. Could it be that God's people are being deceived? No, it can't be. We're not going to be deceived. No. We cannot be deceived this morning. Because of the lies and the lies that are coming to all of us. And so, as the papacy is implementing their agenda, you could see what is the vehicle they're using to promote their propaganda. <laughs> you guys know it. I don't need to tell you. You guys know exactly what is their vehicle that they're using. And you know, I was in Hawaii uh, two, three weeks ago, and I was telling the people in Hawaii this past time I was there, uh, I said, uh, you know, I, I was able to go there and surf. First day I got there, there was a wave, swell. And I used this as an analogy in a spiritual sense because I told them when I got there, there were waves and I was able to surf. And in surfing, you have a set of waves. And in a set of waves, 
maybe three or four waves in a set. And sometimes there's a fifth wave and it's the cleanup set. And what we've seen within the last year, we've seen the first wave in this set, which was COVID-19. And now we're into the Delta variant, which is the second wave. But did you know that they already have names for the three and fourth one? They have a name for it. The third set of waves that's going to come in is Eta. And then they have a name for the fourth one, which is Iota. My sister flies for United Airlines. And she flew into Hawaii back in September when COVID was in its extreme condition. She took a picture of Kalakaua Avenue. And she took a picture of Waikiki Beach. I've never seen pictures like that ever in my entire life. Being from Hawaii, you always see people all over the beach. Kalakaua Avenue, a lot of cars. But it was like the twilight zone. No one on the beach. No one driving in Waikiki. And I told the church at Diamond Head Seventh day Adventist Church, you experienced lockdown. No one said anything as I was speaking to them. And you were locked down on that first wave. COVID 19. And now we're in the second stage, the next wave, which is the Delta variant. And it's going to go on. And I said, can you imagine another lockdown? They know exactly what they can do. They know how to manage this. This is not something new to you and I. We can see it. The Bible says the whole world will buy into this deception. And they're using this central system. They're going to use this technology to control the whole world, to buy and sell. It's going to be a financial control. This is what you call a controlled demolition. This is the threefold union of religion. And we're not talking religion yet. And they're using it to engineer, to crash the economy. You know why they want to crash the economy? So they can control you and I. This is not to be afraid. I'm just telling you the facts today. Is that okay? Yes. You know, in the Bible, you're going to talk about a one world religion. Well, this is the precursor. This is all being set up. All by design. Can you imagine they got the names for all these variants? Where did they come up with these names? Where did they come up with it? Could I say that it was pre-planned? Yes? You see, my friends, we need, we need to understand, you know, when, just before I went to Hawaii um, three weeks ago, Four weeks prior to that, I was thinking, ha, ah, Hawaii is going to implement the no-fly rule unless you were vaccinated. So I said, oh, I hope I, hope I, can, I can go to Hawaii before they, they, they put that law into play. And you know, for some reason, the, the Lord held the winds yet. Amen? Because when I got to Hawaii, uh, 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 my cousin uh, gave me the opportunity to speak at my old church where I grew up at. It wasn't because I'm smart, but because God wanted me to share a message that they needed to hear. So what they're doing is uh, they're controlling and they needed this technology to control the world. It's called the Great Reset. Go study it for yourself. I don't have time to talk about that today. But they're going to reset everything you and I have grown up into. And it's going to be universal. It it will become a universal basic income. They're going to control every money in your bank. 
It'll be a one world digital economy and a social credit score income. This is the great reset. We're dealing with a, a, a technology that is beyond my comprehension. We're dealing with this one world economy. It's already here. You know, the media is not telling you everything. They're going to only tell you what they want you to know. It's already here. And God has given you and I an intellect to understand. We need to understand this. It's not going to go back to normal. And in order to, for you to qualify, you need to comply. Listen, you need to comply under the government compliance. Put on your mask or you can't travel. Get your shot or you can't move. <laughs> My wife was telling me the other day, don't pick up your phone anymore. You're getting stressed out. You're, you're getting anxiety. And she was right. So if you call me and I don't pick up, is that, that's the reason why. <laughs> you see, my friends, do we have hope? Yeah, we have hope. We have hope. This is a serious time. We're living in perilous times. A dangerous time. And many of us are not ready for this to happen yet. You see, it is not about the virus vaccines. It's not. It's not about that. It's a precursor. But it's about your data that they want. You notice when COVID hit, we had to register with everything. Here at Loma Linda University, in order for me to go swim at noon, I had to Register. Register. They wanted to know exactly when I went to swim, when I left. I said, what does that have to do with COVID? No, it's about your data. They want your information. Here at the church over here, in order for you to go to church, you had to register. And if you went to church, your name should be on the list. Is that strange? But see, we, we, we've been programmed to accept it. Who's protesting about that? None. Nobody. We're complying. We've complied. And they're programming each of us to go along with this three-fold union of religion. And I'm not even talking about religion. So it is control. Control demolition. So how are they going to do this? They have to figure out a way to manipulate your mind. Turn with me to Revelation 18. Go there. Revelation 18. We know that this threefold union is none other than demons. Right? That's what the Bible says. Spirits of demons. Now look at Revelation chapter 18 verse 20. Three. Are you there? Amen? And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all, some nations, all nations deceived. By sorceries. Oh. <laughs> People have been studying. <laughs> By sorceries. And I went to look it up in the Strongs. And you know what it means? It means the use of administering of drugs. Number two. Poisoning the mind. And it's a magical art that is found in connection with idolatry. So they're going to deceive. They're going to, they're going to use this vehicle 
to deceive the whole world. And guess what? If you don't comply, you're going to be marginalized. I'm sorry to tell you that I'm, I'm already being marginalized. And I work for a, a institution telling me, you better get it. But I live in this great country of ours, the United States of America. I have a right to choose. Amen? Amen. Do you have a right? You have a conscience to choose? But it said in, in, in the pen of inspiration that it's going to be repudiated. It's going to be taken away. Let me read it. Let me read it. No, let me read it from here. I will read it from here. July 1st. Maranatha. Our country, this great nation. Is this a great nation? <laughs> my country. My, your country. This country shall, listen, repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government. You know what? It's actually gone. If you speak out now on YouTube, you say anything, you would be platformed. You're going to be censored. you are seeing that. I don't need to tell you. You guys are all students. But it's actually happening right now where it's being repudiated. And listen to this. And shall make provisions for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions. Our nation, the United States, shall abjure. You know what that word abjure means? To renounce. They're going to renounce this Bible. They're already doing it. And then it's going to act, uh, to enact a, and we all know where this is leading to, to enact a Sunday law. This is where we are. And they're using this COVID-19, I want to say pandemic, but I'm going to say pandemic. It, they're using this vehicle to expedite this fast-moving train. And it's moving like lightning speed. They got their foot to the pedal. And they're not going to let up. They're going to ship it to overdrive. And they can do it. You know why? Because no one's protesting. Who's protesting? No one. No one's protesting. Amen. It's going to be fulfilled to the very letter. The question is, am I ready for that prophecy? Am I ready? Because you and I know what is going to be the condition. And we're going to look at that in just a few minutes here. So we know that there's a controlled demolition of our nation. They needed this technology to control the whole world. Can you imagine when you cannot buy or sell? You gave a, you saw a precursor to that at Costco. <laughs> you have to wait in line. This is all by design. This is all by design. Yes, by design, by design. Controlling your minds, controlling my mind. And then if you go against the grain, <laughs> try it. See what happens to you. I was in the airplane. I was in the airplane. I'm going to tell you two stories really quick. First one was when I was in Hawaii. I was trying to catch the bus. And it's real implemented that you all, all have to wear masks. So I jump on the bus, I had my mask on, paid the, the driver, and I sat down, right behind the driver actually, about two seats behind him. And I decided to drink some water. So I pulled my mask down, and I was drinking some water and looking out the window. All of a sudden, the bus driver slams on the brake, and I went. <laughs> and he turns around and he said, hey, you, you getting off the bus? 
No. He said, put on your mask. This is a bus driver, a local bus driver. And I was thinking, huh? It's like, that was just on the bus. Then I was on the plane. And I was on the plane. Uh, uh, I couldn't breathe, so I put my mask down under my nose. And the flight attendant said, hey, put, your, put it all through the nose. I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. They got us where they want us. We're living in a time where God has given you an intellect. An intellect to what? To, to understand where we are in the stream of time. And we're, what we're seeing this morning is a control demolition. Because the Bible tells us he calls it all, both small and great and rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a... Oops. Yeah. I mean, this is... You can see it, how it's all being formulated. And if you don't receive it, you can't buy. You can't go to store. Maybe you won't even buy, be able to buy a gas. We don't know what extent this is going to go. We don't know. But you can see how this is all being formulated to control your mind. So what are we to do? You know what Ellen White tells us? But God's people are not to fear. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yes. There, there, there is going to be a marked contrast between those who bear the seal of God and those who worship the beast and his image. There's going to be a distinction. You know what? There's going to be two groups. Only two groups. Which group are you going to be in? What two groups? Turn with me to Luke. Let's go to Luke. Luke, chapter 6. Are you there? Amen? Luke, chapter 6. Look at verse 47. Luke, chapter 6, verse 47. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them... I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house, dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was what? Founded on a rock. Verse 49, but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Let's make it even more plain. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 25. And the rain descended, and the floods came up, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Who's that rock? Jesus. Jesus is that rock of my salvation. He needs to be the rock of your salvation. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. Let's go quickly. My time is running. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Amen? <laughs> when that wind blows, when the government's pushing all these laws, you're, His foundation is sure. Having this seal. Oh, having this seal. Hold that. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. Go quickly. Quick Bible study here. Isaiah, are you there? Isaiah chapter 8. You should know this. Everybody should know this. But I'm going there for those who don't know. 
8, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. And what does it read? It says, bind up the testimony. Seal the what? The law. Among my disciples. Seal that law. The law of God. And the devil hates that law. He said, there's no law. You don't need to keep that law. But it says, bind it. Where it should be binded? Here. Because it's going to come down to taking all your stuff away. We got to be on this solid foundation this morning. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Are you His this morning? <laughs> we, we have to be His this morning. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. What is iniquity? Iniquity is something you know it's wrong and you continue to do it. Depart from it. We're living in a time where we need to understand these two foundations. Yes, we're dealing with the threefold union, but if you are on the solid ground... The rain cannot wash it away. The winds cannot blow it away. The earth cannot shake it. Yes, Pastor, you talked about building that foundation deep to bedrock. Why? So that when the time comes, it would not be moved. Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, you need to turn there for other foundation can no, can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Yes, we have to build on this foundation. And you know what? In John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave power. He gave power. He gave power to what? To become sons and daughters of God. So who are the sons and daughters of God? It's those that uh, allow the Spirit of God to work in their hearts. The Spirit of God needs to be in your heart. Yeah. Turn with me to Romans. Let's look at it. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Are you there? Amen? Amen? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Are you being led by the Spirit of God this morning? Let me pull this up. In Maranatha. In John chapter 1 verse 12. Go with me there. Let's go. John 12. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave power. To what? To become sons of God. We know that, but the Spirit of God comes into your life. You are considered a son and daughter of God. Amen? According to Romans chapter 8, verse 14. But here, in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says... Uh, he gives you power. Is, is this power uh, about me beating up somebody? <laughs> Amen, sister. Yes. He gives you power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So Ellen White is telling us here in 2.12 of Maranatha, she says, we are to pray for this power. Pray for it. But not, not only to pray for it, she said, expect the power. And then you know what? She says, receive the power. Receive the power for what? Well, let's look at it. We have a Bible text for that. Let's go there. 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Corinthians. Go there, quickly. 2 Corinthians, chapter 6. 6 verse, starting at verse 14. 
2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be not equally yoked with none unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness and unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agree- verse 16, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, listen, and walk in them, and she, they shall be my I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Are you his people this morning? Amen? We're living under this threefold union of religion because it will culminate to a religious issue. But let me finish this text. Verse 17. Wherefore? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, verse 18, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. Amen? Amen. This is a promise for all of us. You know, when I, when I did this study, I started to be overwhelmed because as I started to read Maranatha, I, I was going, oh, who can, who can stand? Who's going to stand? Who's going to stand? Going back to Maranatha, I'm going to close One nation. One nation. That's our nation. And what, only one. <laughs> one nation, only one. That's us. That's the great United States of America meets the specifications of this prophecy. None other. No other. It points unmistakably to the United States of America. Go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And this beast power of Revelation 13 verse 11 is this beast who's coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he's speaking as a dragon. (laughs) How does a dragon speak? They force you. They coerce you. They control you. God never compels no one. He draws you. Christ draws you. The United States is in prophecy. And here's a striking figure of the rise and growth of our own nation. The lamb-like horns emblems of innocence and gentleness well represents the character of our government as expressed in its two fundamental principles republicanism and protestantism but that's all going to be done away with we're seeing it being unraveled this morning We're living in a time where we need to be on this sure foundation this morning. The rock Christ Jesus. As Paul says, turn with me in my closing text. Time doesn't allow me to carry more. I, I could probably go another hour, but that's not going to happen. I'm just giving you enough to today so that you can go out and study it for yourself. You need to study. You know, like Paul, Paul was able to say, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8, henceforth, this is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, look at it, verse 7. Verse 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. 
And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul is saying, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. And then verse 6 says, For I am now ready to be offered. He was headed for the chopping blocks. Getting ready for his head to be chopped off. And he could say, I am now ready. And you know what? People were not allowed to go see his, his execution. Because he had too much of an influence. But you know what it did? The people that were there were converted. Amen, sister? The people saw in Paul. And they were converted. Our people are going to be converted when they see you and me. We have to come to a point in our spiritual life where we can say, I am now ready to be offered. Because you know what? It's going to come down to losing everything that we have. If you are going to be faithful, you're going to lose everything that you have. You know, this is all temporal. Amen. Amen. Take the world, but give me Jesus. This is all temporal. For our light affliction is just for a moment. But the eternal things are forever. Amen. I am now ready to be offered. Today, I hope that we have a a much more clearer threefold union. Time didn't allow me to go into depth with it, but I just gave you a synopsis of what you and I will be facing in the future. How many of you this morning, you know that we are living in dangerous times and know that, and know this, that you need to make changes in your life. Amen? Amen. You know in your heart that we're not ready for what's coming, but today we can completely surrender and dedicate, rededicate our lives to the Lord. How many of you want to stand and say, Lord, I want to rededicate my life? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. This is not a time to be playing church anymore. No, it's not, not, not time. This is a time of rededication, a revival and reformation time. A time where we have to come boldly to the throne of grace and say, Lord, I surrender all. How, how many of you want to tell the Lord, I want to surrender all to you today? Amen. Amen. All right, let's kneel as we come boldly to the throne of grace this morning. Our Father in heaven, Forgive me, Lord, for even going too quickly in this study, Lord. Sometimes I get a little excited. But, Lord, Lord I know you've guided me, that I, I've, you know, followed your counsel. Um, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will give us a, a clear revelation of your will. I pray for every hand that went up, Father. I, I pray that. You've seen their hands. They know that uh, we're living in a dangerous time and that we need to be on that rock, sure foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So this morning, Father, I lift up every hand that went up. They feel the need to rededicate their lives to you. I need it just as much as anyone else, Lord. Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness that we may be accounted worthy to be placed in that Lamb's book of life. I pray for the leadership, our church here. I pray that you will continue to bless Pastor Cortez as he leads. I pray for uh, each of us, Lord, as we continue to um, surrender our lives to you. I pray, Lord, as we leave this church that you will Send your mighty and holy angels to protect us as we travel. Give us traveling mercies. But more importantly, Father, place in our hearts the desire to hunger and thirst after your righteousness. We love you. 
We praise you and we thank you for these blessings today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.